For many of us gamers, we're no stranger to seeing HD remasters or ports of Nintendo 3DS games onto modern hardware. Games like Resident Evil Revelations, Castlevania Mirrors of Fate, and even Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. But ever since Nintendo shut down its 3DS eShop and stopped all production on Nintendo 3DS games, getting HD remasters and ports of old 3DS games announced today just feels all the more sweet. So I want to give a huge thank you to NIS America for giving me a review copy of The Legend of Legacy HD Remaster. As someone who never got to play The Legend of Legacy on the Nintendo 3DS, I was incredibly excited when I heard that it was getting an HD remaster. I was just excited to play the game for the first time. So now that I've sunk some hours into this game on the PS5, is this the Nintendo 3DS hidden gem JRPG that we've all been waiting to see remastered for modern consoles? Let's talk about it. So like I mentioned, The Legend of Legacy originally saw its debut on the Nintendo 3DS back in 2015, almost a whole decade ago. Is that, is that not insane? 2015 was almost a decade ago? The game was actually developed with kind of an all-star cast. The game designer was Kyoji Koizumi, who's most notably had a hand in designing the Saga games. And one of the artists for the game, Tomomi Kobayashi, is pretty well known for his work on the Saga games as well. The game's story was written by Masato Kato, who if you don't know who that is, he is actually an uncredited director of Chrono Trigger who wrote a lot of that script as well as its sequel, Radical Dreamers, Xenogears, Chrono Cross, Final Fantasy XI, and even parts of Final Fantasy VII. And the musical composer for the game is Masashi Hamauzu, who is one of my favorite game composers of all time, doing the music for both Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy XIII, and tons of other wonderful soundtracks. After they finished The Legend of Legacy, many of the development team went on to make The Alliance Alive, another Nintendo 3DS JRPG that later also got HD remastered. Many of the staff have even credited their work on The Legend of Legacy as kind of a rough draft for what they would go ahead and do with The Alliance Alive. So with a pretty loaded development team on our hands, let's go ahead and talk about all that is wonderful about this game. And let's just go ahead and start with the music. I think the music in this game is very pretty. It's not offensive in any way. Nothing really crazy stands out, but if you actually take the time to just sit there and listen to the tunes that are in this game, it's wonderful. The Masashi Hamauzu, he, he just doesn't really miss, in my opinion. Sure, maybe he doesn't have as many themes that are most uh, memorable in people's minds, such as people like Nobuo Uematsu or Yoko Shimomura. Uh, you know, a, a lot of his stuff is very atmospheric. It kind of just embraces the ambiance of whatever the mood is supposed to make you feel. You know, and that's I'm using a lot of very vague language with trying to describe his music, but his music is kind of vague in a very positive sense. I don't know if I'm actually making that point clear, <laughs> if that's something that you can really follow, but go ahead and check out this game if you like some really good music, because that is kind of honestly the only really good stuff going for this game. I don't mean to just be fully negative for the rest of the review here, but I don't really have a choice. When doing these kinds of reviews, I typically talk about the good, the mixed, and the bad. And if I'm being fully honest, there's really nothing here that I thought was mixed, per se. Other than the music being a, a pretty positive note for me, everything else here just kind of left a pretty negative taste in my mouth. So with that said, let's talk about the bad. Now, we haven't really talked about the story here. Uh, mainly because the game itself doesn't really say much about its own story. There is a story here. You play as a, uh, a group of young travelers, if you will, basically trying to discover the mysteries of this mysterious island called Avalon that just kind of appeared out of nowhere. So you're trying to explore this continent, and as you are exploring, you find these, I don't know, stone monolith-type things where whenever you examine it, it gives you a very vague description of the history of Avalon, the world or the island that you're on, right? So 
that is basically how the story is presented to you. There's a handful of cutscenes at the beginning of the game, depending on what character you decide to choose and how you're going to go about this journey. You're going to get some varying story beats here and there, just depending on who you choose. But for the most part, you're all discovering kind of the same thing about the island. The lighting in here keeps changing because I'm using natural lighting and the clouds keep shifting, so I have to keep shifting the blinds. Like I mentioned, you can choose who your starting character is in the game, but while you're playing, you do come across some of the other playable characters and you can recruit them into your party. And to recruit them into your party is a very underwhelming thing in action you just kind of see them out on the field and you might share one or two sentences with them and then they join your party a lot of the criticisms of octopath traveler in regards to its characters and how they communicate with each other and their their story interconnectivity a lot of it kind of felt like oh i don't think that they've done a great job in making you feel like these characters know each other that is on a whole other level with this game. In The Legend of Legacy, you have these playable characters, and it's as if there wasn't a single person on the development staff who thought, hey, we should, we should make it to where the player feels like these characters e have even met each other. <laughs> these characters feel like they don't know a single thing about one another, and every character just feels like cannon fodder for you to just be playing uh, the game. There's really not much story here. There's not much character growth or character development of any kind. I decided to play as Bianca because she has amnesia and she has a mysterious tie to this mysterious continent that you're exploring. So I felt like, okay, you know what? If I don't know what's going on here, I might as well have my main party character be someone who also has no idea what's going on. Makes sense, right? By the end of this game, I still had no idea really what this game was about. Yes, there are other characters that you can play as to maybe get just a little bit more info about the world, but the way that you receive info by going and touching these monoliths or whatever, and they give you cryptic hints about the history of the world, none of it was interesting to me personally. All of it was very, very vague, and as someone who puts story as a very high priority in my video games, I don't like that I had no idea what was going on the entire time from start to finish. Anytime that I felt like I was starting to understand where the story was going, none of it was gripping to me in any regard, if I'm being fully honest with you. But hey, this is a Nintendo 3DS game ported onto modern hardware. The story isn't the most important thing, right? The main meat and potatoes would be the gameplay. It's pick up and go gameplay. It should be really fun to play. How's the gameplay? It is really boring and I don't like it. In regards to the way that you level up your character or their stats, it's all dependent on what you decide to do in battle, similar to that of the Saga games. If you're a fighter who wants your melee attacks with your fist to be stronger, you're gonna have to fight a lot. Your fist power isn't going to get stronger if you're using a spear. Now on the surface, that sounds like it's a pretty good time because that means that you have a pretty significant variety of gameplay that you can use. You have people with classes who are more suitable for that character, but you can make them do other things if you don't want them to do what that class is doing, right? I mean, there's a significant amount of customization to its gameplay to an extent. However, I just felt like every character was the same. No matter what sort of weapon or attack type you decided to let loose with that character, they all just kind of felt the exact same to me. The game just kind of does this weird thing where it presents this idea of high customization in your party while also limiting you to the same abilities that you're going to be using from start to finish. I personally felt like it was just really underwhelming and very boring and uh, talking about the battles too. Thankfully, there is a way that you can make battles go faster. You have the option to just hold down the select button and whatever your previous command was for your character, you can just keep that going throughout the entire battle by holding that down and everything just kind of moves slightly faster than normal. But you're going to be seeing a ton of the same enemies, a ton of the same stuff. Like it's just, you're going to be battling a lot of the same types of monsters. It's not very interesting. Like I just never felt like engaged. Even whenever you got to big boss battles, 
nothing ever really popped out to me. And if we're going to be talking about just kind of its art direction as well, because this is this is kind of what I'm talking about with enemy design, but even just in, in its world design, you might look at this game and think, ooh, it actually kind of looks like Bravely Default. I really like the way that the Bravely Default games look. Me too. I love the way that, they, that those games look, how they play. I'm a big fan of those series, and you can tell that this team had that sort of inspiration in mind when developing The Legend of Legacy. However, it just, it just doesn't hit the mark, especially... I mean, maybe it actually looked really nice at the time on Nintendo 3DS, but let's say you're playing this game on a PlayStation 5 on a 65-inch QLED TV, right? You've got the gaming setup going. This game looks really, really bad. This whole HD remaster of the game pretty much only serves to upscale the character resolution and give more detail to the characters, as well as move the UI around so that it makes more sense on one single screen instead of two screens like on the Nintendo 3DS. Other than that though, the presentation here is really really bad. I really enjoy the pop-up book style that the Bravely Default games introduced to the genre, but the way that this HD remaster looks blown up on a larger screen, if that's how you're playing it, it looks really bad. They didn't touch up any of it. Everything is muddy. Everything is very blurred. All the edges are very jagged, and sure, they're hand-drawn. If you're looking at it on a very, very small screen, it might actually look really, really good. But if you're playing this on, like I said, console, like the PlayStation or something, it's not going to look great on your TV. Let's talk about exploration uh, since we're also kind of talking about its uh, style and its presentation, right? Because the way that you explore this game has a very unique style that they opted for where whenever you're walking through a field, all of the foliage and enemies and rocks and objects to interact with, all of them pop up as you get closer to them and as you're walking away from things, those things start to disappear. So it's kind of like you're walking through a pop-up book that is popping up as you're walking through it. It's interesting in concept, but boy, do I hate it. I'm basically left with just staring at the mini-map in the top corner of the screen because as I'm just walking buy things and then they disappear after I walk by them, I have a very poor grasp of where I actually am in the map. So I'm just stuck to have to look at that thing the entire time instead of looking at my actual character as I'm walking around. And speaking of just things to do as you're walking around, there are encounters, there are enemy battles that you can get into while you're walking around. They're not random per se, but with this type of pop-up system, in the map, there were tons of times that I got into a random battle because instead of the enemy popping up far away from me where I could see it and then try to, you know, walk away from it, there were many enemies that popped up right beneath my feet. And it, not in a sense of like, oh no, you just stepped on a, on a tile that is a random encounter, you know? No, it's like this was just a, a happen chance of <laughs> the enemy just appeared right below my feet because I would happened to walk that direction. So that was really frustrating every time that happened. But as this is a JRPG, of course, there are those item shops that you can go to, weapon shops and things of that nature. But ultimately, this game just kind of felt like your run-of-the-mill JRPG that tries to do things new and unique, but ultimately, in my opinion, kind of to its detriment. It's cool to have a non-linear story presented in a way that is similar to how this game does it, but whenever you can just kind of grab the pieces of the story as you're playing it without having any specified order in which way you're supposed to grab these story pieces and piece it all together yourself, it just becomes tedious and it becomes convoluted and it makes me feel like I'm having to do more work to discovering, uh, you know, the plot of this game than I really want to. On top of that, the amount of customization in this game is cool, but I don't like doing any of the battles. Everything feels really repetitive. Everything's very samey. I just, I'm just not a fan of actually playing the game and every single time that you have me thrown into a battle, most of the time it's because of this weird pop-up exploration system on the map and then I'm just thrown into a battle and I, I'm at a point now where I can't stand random encounters. So ultimately, this was a very, 
negative gaming experience for me personally. But if you like good music, this game's got some of that. I, I really don't mean to just be bashing on this game the entire video, but it's just, you know, from its gameplay to its story and its characters and exploration and artistic design, so much about this game was just really, really underwhelming to me. And ultimately, I was just so bored playing this very, very tedious game. Also, I, I want to mention this just because I, I think it's true. At least this is my experience with the game, but I don't think there is any auto save in this game. There was a, a day where I was playing this game and I put in like two and a half hours. I like started up my gaming session for that day, you know, was just playing, recording gameplay footage, and then I died. And then it took me back all the way two and a half hours ago when I started playing the game. I died during a boss battle and I lost everything and had to basically just start all of that over. And if that's ever happened to you, it's like, just, th just throw the game away at that point. But with good news, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this team went on to make the Alliance Alive, which is a much better JRPG. And it also has an HD remaster that you can play on the Nintendo Switch and you can play on uh, PS4 and stuff like that. So, I mean, if you want to play a really good game by this team who made this game, go play the Alliance Alive. I personally can't, in good conscience recommend the legend of legacy it just wasn't it just wasn't for me maybe it is for you though maybe this was a game that you were really looking forward to because you played it back on the nintendo 3ds or maybe you were like me and you were like "Ooh, i've never played that game before and it's getting an hd remaster i might hop in let me know down in the comments below what you have decided to do are you going to pick up this game did you play it back on the 3ds are you playing it for the first time let me know. I'm really curious just to see what all of you have to say about the Legend of Legacy HD remaster. But while you're also down there, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell as well so that you're notified whenever new videos like this go live. Anyways, thank you guys for listening to this review. I'm sorry it was so overly negative, but I uh, just, I'm honest with you guys. I try to be as transparent and as upfront with you guys as possible when talking about these games and as much as I, I love to get uh, games from publishers who see my content and they want to see my opinions of the games it's kind of scary for me sometimes because I'm like ooh what if I don't like it what if it's like you know the legend of legacy and I really had a bad time are you gonna <laughs> are you gonna not send me games anymore I don't want that to happen so I just want to be honest with you guys. So thank you so much again for listening to this review. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>